Hello everyone and happy International Roma Day. My name is Magda Matake. I'm a Roma scholar and activist from Romania and I work at the FXB Center for Health and Human Rights at Harvard University as an instructor and the director of the Roma program. Across the world, Romani people celebrate International Roma Day on April 8 to mark the first World Roma Congress, which was held 50 years ago in 1971 in a boarding school in the suburbs of South London. The leaders present at that Congress were mostly men and not necessarily representing all Romani groups, but yet that was still a historic moment a moment when Roma leaders chose the symbols of our nationhood, including the Roma flag and the Roma anthem. I believe that this was one of the most monumental moments in our history. And I say that not only because what it represents to us today, but also because it was one of the very few bold, unapologetic Roma-led steps in reclaiming our true name, Roma, and other elements of our identity and demanding our rights by proposing our own agenda. And of course, I may romanticize that historic moment and the Romani leadership back then. Many of us do, but looking at it through the eyes of our present day realities, it feels like such a liberating and breathtaking context to have Roma gathered to strategize and make demands without any influence, power, pressure, or hidden agendas from governments, European institutions, or other stakeholders. And I say that because it is rare today to see Roma advocacy efforts that are not linked, led, influenced, funded, toned down by various stakeholders, including state institutions. And in this context, it seems to me today that the efforts to dismantle anti-Roma racism are not fully Roma-led, are not powerful enough, are not effective enough. And somehow they are imagined through the gaze of gadget or dominant majorities. To tackle anti-Roma racism, the European institutions, for instance, put too much or rather exclusive emphasis on, on prejudice. And facing prejudice, but more so facing everyday discrimination and interpersonal racism, it is an everyday reality of Romani people. So of course it requires attention and dismantling. But while prejudice is used to justify anti-Roma racism, the roots, the power, and the mechanisms of racism are to be found someplace else. They transpire through institutions policies, cultures, education, economy, ideologies. What I'm saying is that we can't stop institutional racism unless we fully see and fight against the force, the power, the consequences of structural racism through reforming institutions, policies, and legacies of the past. As for the Roma program at Harvard, we are waiting for the pandemic to be, to be over, to be able to start our data collection in a study looking at everyday discrimination and stigma encountered by Romani people in, in Canada. And on medium term, we will continue to unpack manifestations and pillars of anti-Roma racism and conduct research and come up with methods to measure racism, especially racism as a determinant of, of Roma health. But the reality is that school segregation is increasing. Racialized Roma poverty remains steady. Anti-Roma racism has acquired new dimensions during the pandemic and created a harder mountain to climb as for instance, Countless Roma children could not join online classes as they did not have access to the internet. I remain hopeful in a future in which upcoming generations of Roma activists, community organizers, and scholars understand better racism and its mechanisms and frame our own realities, pains, and experiences and organize, mobilize, and speak up unafraid, unapologetic, and together to dismantle a system of oppression 
that has hurt millions and generations of Roma lives for at least 700 years, 